Well, well, welcome to another episode of the Anthony Sarandria Podcast, filled with exclusive interviews with experts from all fields, motivation, inspiration, personal development, business, and more. This, this, is, this is the Anthony Sarandria Podcast. Good to see you. Good to see you too, bro. Yeah, I was thinking... Um... So, dude, I was thinking, like, even, like, when we first met, just, like, going through, like, okay, like, your childhood, yeah. your story, where you're at now, like, just some of the mindset stuff you were taught, we've been taught, you know, you and I jam on and all that, if that works. Yeah, 100%. I'd love to. Well, how I met you, I basically was just like, yo, what's up? My name's Ty. I got one foot. <laughs> we met at a line in Dutch Bros, and um, that was sick, you know, just getting to connect with you. And then literally, like, a week later, we got breakfast. So, that was really cool how, like, God orchestrated that. That was sick. And then, you know, I got to share my story with you. And it's basically just like, you know, right now I'm like, um, I'm writing a, a whole message for a TED Talk that I'm giving at Grand yep. Canyon University yep. at the end of March. And it's been amazing to go through that process because I've been able to, I've been able to like write my story like really well. And the whole theme is gratefulness and like gratitude throughout your life and how yeah. like it should be a mindset that you need to have constantly. Yeah. And, you know, when I was 11 years old, I was in a lawnmower accident that took my right foot. Um, I was sneaking up behind my dad. He was on a riding lawnmower, didn't know I was there, wanted to shoot him with a rubber band gun for fun. And what do you know? Um, he, he reached the edge of the lawn and put in reverse. I was right behind him. Didn't know it. And I stumbled to the ground, back right tire to my right foot, and the blade just completely got my foot. Um, my dad sprung up into action, lifted the motor to its side, saw me there crying, screaming, everything, and lifted the motor to its side and, you know, got towels quickly to stop the bleeding. My foot was completely gone. I was airlifted to a medical center in uh, Sacramento, California, and underwent four surgeries within 11 days, and they amputated about two inches above my ankle. Yeah. The coolest thing that I always share, though, you know, it's like it brings this mindset of gratefulness into reality. And I always share this with my mom. I say, I said out of my first surgery, I was like, Mom. I know this happened for a reason. You know, I know it happened. At, a, at 11, at 11. At 11 years old. Yeah. And so that's what's so cool is like subconsciously, or I didn't even really know it back then, I guess, but like I knew there was a purpose behind this happening. And like where I'm at now is absolutely insane on like what I'm like doing and what I'm training for. I don't know if you want me to share that. Yeah, yet. Dude, tell, tell <laughs> me what I mean. I mean, listen, you, you, so, you know, like you mentioned, you and I met in a Dutch bro line and I was like, this guy yeah. is just on fire. Like what people skills, like we're just a fucking bubbly, awesome individual. And then I look down and I go, holy shit, he's missing a leg. And then yeah. we're talking more and I go, this guy's in the Olympics. And I, th yeah. and I think, I think there's yeah. a couple things I want to chat through. One is, I don't think, I think people think when you're in the Olympics, you're like a multimillionaire. Right. And it's like, huh. like, yeah. to, like for, to educate people on that process, but before I would love we, to as well, before we even, before we even get to that, dude, I want, I want to hear, yeah, tell everyone, like, obviously you have a great story with who you are in general, but yeah. on top of that, you have the accolades. Like you literally, you swim in the Olympics with one leg, you know? And I, I think yeah, exactly. people, people know, you know, you swam in Rio, you're training for Japan, like Tokyo. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, T tell us today. And then, and then we'll, we'll work backwards if that works. Of course. I mean, you know, just like, kind of like, like thinking on like now, like where my life is, I am a professional swimmer and how I got there was just incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I swim against like some of the best people in the world and it's sick, like how fast I've gotten. That's just by the grace of God and like my heart and my hard work and training that I've been doing for almost about five to six years now. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up playing water polo and swam all my life in um, California and I have four older siblings that all played water polo and swam as well. So it's just kind of in our blood to be in the pool and in the water. You know, like when I first got my cast off of my leg after like my surgeries and stuff like that and went to physical therapy, the best place to be at was the pool. That's where I felt the most freedom. I was just able to be like weightless and nothing could really stop me in there. So I just knew that this place was my place to be. It was my yeah. purpose in there um, for now, I guess, yeah. until like this career is over. But it's always been it's always the water has always connected me for sure, and so through that, I swam, played water polo, was on varsity freshman year in swimming, and then uh, uh, moved to Cal uh, moved to Washington State when I was a sophomore. In uh, I don't know what year it was, but I was about sixteen, and I graduated high school in two thousand fifteen. 
um, was first team all state water polo in Washington, made state my 100 meter backstroke and got a really cool connection through an article that was written about me in the uh, Seattle Times. Mm. And this former Paralympic coach messaged my coach and was like, hey, we should get him out to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And so just like that all escalated like crazy, bro. It was it was insane. And uh, literally a week after I graduated high school, I was just like, all right, let's do this. I mean, Rio's in 2016. It's 2015. I might as well just give it a shot for this year and see if I can yeah. grow and get fast enough to make it. And so I made it. So literally I moved a week after I graduated high school. I moved to the Olympic Training Center, started training full time, got to experience a lot of elite athletes, learn from them, understand how nutrition works, recovery, stuff like that. Man, sleep is important. That's for yes. sure. And food <laughs> and what you put in your body. It's insane. Um, <laughs> like facts. For sure. So, yeah. Right. And, you know, literally um, within a year, like I made the games. It's incredible. Within a year of training, all of that hard work and learning and, and wanting to grow yep. and seeking growth and wisdom from other people yep. allowed for me to train even harder and understand how to do that too. And I'm like so grateful about it. Like every single step along the way, however I grow, like I, I want to continually grow, right? That's how we should be as humans. I think we, so, we want to seek to grow. We shouldn't be so complacent and be like, oh, I know everything. No, we really don't. Yes. We, want, we need to continue to grow in that in whatever aspect like for swimming i'm still learning yes. uh, my coach now like as i'm training for tokyo like i i learn something new every day from him still mm. one of the best coaches i've ever had in my life and uh, brian hoffer you're awesome love you dude <laughs> um and so as i made rio it was an amazing like experience i shaved four to five seconds off in my um, 100 meter back trip and made the team wow. and competed in rio at the Paralympic Games for Team USA. So sick. And then, you know, that was like a whole huge high. I was 19 at the games. I didn't medal or anything. Nothing really happened at those games. I kind of was just there and I got to compete against world class athletes. Yep. But like that, I literally landed on the moon yeah. and not getting a medal is just me tripping on a pebble, basically. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and dude. so being there was incredible. It just fueled the, the, the entire fire. Because a year later, I went to World Championships in Mexico City in 2017, got a bronze there in my 100 meter back, which was sick. And then in 2019, I went to the Pan American Games in Peru and got a couple, got a couple gold medals there, yeah. one gold in my 100 meter back, and then yeah. uh, a silver and a bronze. So that was yeah. super cool to be at the Pan American Games there. And then, you know, COVID hit. That's a whole other thing to talk about, too. Sure. Um, man, shoot. Uh, I'll just say that COVID was a blessing in disguise, which is kind of crazy to say. Yes. I'm grateful for it. And um, a lot of growth. And literally now we're in this year I'm training for Tokyo. I'm in the last six months of training and I could not be more excited and stoked. And I'm just, you know, seeking out like ways how I can train the best I can and just really focus. You know, dude, I, first off, thanks for sharing that. It, it's yeah. the thing that I think, you know, I got from you right away. And I think anyone listening is going to get is, just your mindset. You think so positively and differently. Yeah. And then I think uh, most people do, uh, yeah. unfortunately. And, um, you know, I, I'm curious because I think a lot of things are relative, right? You usually losing your leg, could be somebody getting fired from a job or COVID hitting and someone mm -hmm. dying. Like there, there's these, yeah. these, you know, we'll call them, you know, bumps in the road along the way or growth points that, you know, I'd prefer to, to frame it as. How, how do you get through something like that? So you're 11 and again, you're a kid. You, you lose your leg, you know, I, I've got to imagine thoughts creep in that you don't want there. Yeah. Oh man, oh, never going to be able to do this, that, that. Yeah. So yeah. what were those, what did that look like? And how, and how did you get to the other side of that and how quickly? All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is that it's a choice. It is a choice every day to wake up and choose a life filled with positivity, gratitude, everything like that. You know, we have to choose that every morning. And also like big part of me, and this is who I am. It's just me. My, it's my faith in Jesus. That's what really brings me hope for each and every single day. Cause I'm living for him. That's, and that's just personally me. That's how it helps me to fuel every single goal and dream that I have. Yes. Um, but we have to make that choice first and foremost, when I got out of that first surgery, my very first surgery from the accident, they amputated about two inches, um, high on drugs, a lot of morphine, probably, yeah. you know, my mom literally wrote down everything I said in the hospital too, which is so cool. I love to look cool. back on that. And the first thing she wrote down was what I said, what I said earlier. So mom, I know this happened for a reason. Mm. I chose to believe that and chose to think that 
throughout. And now I did have a crap ton of doubts. Yeah. Uh, I asked God why so much. It was insane how much I asked him. But I always like, I'd always like feel encouraged by the people next to me. Like we have to also understand that we need people around us to yeah. encourage us and support us. That's the other way that we choose this life and, and like use it. Um, I had my mom, you know, taping verses on my bedside and stuff like that, which was sick. And that encouraged me. And I just, people just telling me like, you will be able to walk and run again. Don't worry. Yeah. You will, you'll be able to do this. Like just constant motivation, constant encouragement that allowed for me to push through just getting my cast off, going through physical therapy, you know, being in my wheelchair and going into crutches and then finally getting my first leg. Yeah. You know, like the process of that was insane, but being able to take like my first steps like i was a toddler on my first prosthetic and seeing my parents cry and me cry because i was literally on like taking my first steps i was like yeah. 13 i think yeah. taking my first steps again and that moment was worth all that pain yeah. it was worth everything you know like that growth that mindset of gratitude throughout everything and it's that choice that i just chose to make and it paid off and it's still paying off how did that compare to uh to the Olympics for the first time? Like that was it a similar feeling, you know. Being I never thought I never long. thought about that. You know, I'm like writing my story out a little yeah. more and stuff like that because I'd love to have a book out at some yeah. point in my life. I think that'd for be so sure. cool. I think people would love it. I'd read it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Oh, I would. I mean that. No bullshit. Oh, thank you. I love you dude, so much. This is awesome. Too, brother. Um, but yo, I that comparison, wow, that's a cool comparison. Um, I would say like Rio was just like a whole cultivation of just everything. Yeah, you know, everything I've been through, even through high school, like my, a lot of more doubts in high school, insecurities, random stuff like that that I had to go through, and then because having one leg isn't is, is kind of hard sometimes too. You get insecure, yeah. you yeah. know. But like I'm past all that now. But when I was in high school, like I'd play pranks on people with my leg and stuff, be hilarious. But then there's times where I was just like, I don't just want to wear jeans today. Yeah, I don't really want people to look at my leg or stare at it. You For know. Sure. And that, that, those thoughts come to my mind sometimes even like today, but yeah. I always like trump over them. Cause I'm like, who cares? This is literally who I am. Yeah, and it's like cool because like I have an amazing wife as well, who just, who is like, I love that you have one foot. I couldn't see you with like, two feet. <laughs> that's it's so, like so sick to like, that's so I don't cool know. Hear, that's kind of tight to like, think of it that oh, way. It's really tight, dude. Blessing. Yeah. dude. What a blessing. Well, it's funny. Cause I, so I have a buddy, he's six, six, one and a quarter is what he told me. Right. I'm under six quarter. Foot. Get out and we're here. talking and he goes, he goes, yeah, he goes, that dude is 6'4". Like, you get so many more girls at 6'4". I go, I'm like, dude, you're 6'2". Six, you're six you look taller. I was like, what are you talking But it's just, I realized at that moment, that was this past weekend, I was like, everyone's insecure about something. Yeah. And it's yeah. silly, relatively speaking, you know, to the guy who's yeah. a, who, uh, you know, is, is a quadriplegic, your one leg is like, they would fucking do anything to have that, you know? Like, this That's guy. That's crazy to think guy, about. It's so that true. Wild? Isn't that wild? I was listening wow. to him and I was like, what's wrong with this guy? And there's like nothing. It's all, it's all perspective. It's all, pers there's nothing wrong it with him. It's perspective. perspective. He's six, one. He wants to be thing. six, four. I'm five, 10. I want to be six, two, you know, like you want to have two lights. Wow. It's, it's all perspective, dude. I, dude, That's talk to wild. Me. Isn't that funny? Um, yeah. dude, talk to me a little bit. About, so, okay. So you said something interesting. You said every day is a choice to be ha happy. Yes. Right. And I believe yeah. that exactly too. But I think overwhelmingly it's easy to fall into you know, you're a victim to your circumstance or a manager oh, of your life versus a creator of your experience, you know? And, and I, I, like you believe I create my experience. Do you have any daily rituals or how, how do you, how do you prime someone or prompt someone to choose happiness? If they go, I was born this way, I've got depression, I've got anxiety. I, you know, like these things that like, I think people can, can, you know, not necessarily by their fault or not, you know, kind of use as outlets to say, this is why I have the life I have. I was I hereditarily am fat. You know what I mean? Like, um, and I know genetics play to some things, but you yeah. know, there, there's plenty of people that have fat families that are in great shape. You know what I mean? So do you have any daily rituals or anything that helps prime you to choose that happiness? Most of the stuff is just like mental. Yeah. And so like, maybe it's a daily ritual of waking up and having a goal set in mind for mm -hmm. that day. I like that. Like every Monday, People hate Mondays, right? I love Mondays because that's yes. when we can set goals for the week, yeah. you know, inside your head. Like, oh, I want to do this today. Oh, I'm going to try and do this better in my backstroke when I swim. Oh, I'm going to try and connect with more people. Oh, I could really like, I'd love to encourage somebody to pray over someone today. Yes. Like it's, it's, it's like almost like when, if you set goals and then it's like, and then if you try and like serve other people too, that gives you purpose because mm. you're, you're motivating somebody else's life and encouraging them. Yeah. And like, I think like even if we're going to go like straight, like maybe like physical kind of rituals in, in the morning sure, or like sure. throughout the day, dude, I don't even, 
the biggest thing for me right now of where I'm at is that I just, I wake up and I, I open my Bible and yeah. I just read and I take notes and then it, it refreshes me and it allows for me to just start my day off on a good note. A lot of people can do any kind of like meditation or mindfulness throughout the day. For That's sure. a big one is mindfulness. If you don't know about it, definitely look it up. It's one of the coolest things that you can do for just yourself because it gives you it brings you into a place where like you can release so many things. Yes. Um, and it's kind of cool. So mindfulness is huge. Um, basically just find whatever your passion is because everybody on this, on this earth, they have to have a goal or a dream, right? You need to wake up and understand what that goal or dream is and chase after it. Like it doesn't matter how much money you're going to make or anything like that. I mean, that's just, that's my mentality. Cause like yep. literally dude, like I've said this before in other articles and interviews, they, people ask me what's well, like, how do you define success? My six, and I define it by if I can inspire at least one person today, then I'm, I've been successful. Yeah, I'm successful. Like that's, that's what I want. If I can change and, and mold their heart into a different perspective, maybe yeah. like into something that's more positive and motivating for their life. I'm successful. It's oh, incredible. I love it. You know what you, yeah. you know, even, okay. So even uh, someone listening, that's not religious, right? Yeah, right, right. The, the thing that you keep coming back to that I keep hearing is living for something bigger than yourself. So right. that's God, yeah. your creator, your community, your, your, your team, whatever, like, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. you keep saying. You keep like indirectly, you're taught, you just, you're talking about living for something Crazy. bigger than yourself. And I think Crazy that you notice that, <laughs> it's, uh, but, but I think it's so important, right? It's like that, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, Tony Robinson will always do something. We'll do more for others than we ever will for ourselves. And I think, mm. I think at least for myself, that's where my it's, fire comes all day. It's, yeah, it's, it's so rewarding. Like it's, it's, I don't know when you start to understand service towards others, yeah. you really get to understand how you can serve yourself yeah. and how much it, it benefits you. Yes. It's, it's weird. And it's really cool. Like I love serving people. Yeah. I'd literally get down and wash someone's feet if I could. Yeah. Dude. This is how I am. Like I want to do what I can to help someone else and just, or just encourage them. Like if it's just small words too, or if it's even just saying thank you to somebody in yeah. such a genuine way. It goes so long and it's, it, it goes, it goes such a long way. Yeah, dude. Well, I mean, you, uh -huh. I'm sure you've seen in your life, it comes back tenfold too. Not that that's what you do it for, but it comes, it comes full circle yeah. all the time. Yeah. 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 Dude, it's cool. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So the other thing that you mentioned was, you know, your community and people around you, right? Like that mm -hmm. support group, you know, for you, it was, mm -hmm. it was your mom. Now it's your wife or, yep. you know, your friends, things like that. So COVID, right? A lot of people are stuck inside right. or they're scared. Oh, dude. Any, any thoughts on, on how to create that connection with people? I know it's, it's a tough, I mean, I don't think anybody has the perfect answer. I'm just curious in, in your eyes, how, you know, during quarantine, again, you had your wife, connection. but yeah. How do you connect? How do you create that connection today? Right now? My mind, my mind goes into kind of, um, I mean, especially during COVID that's hard. Like, but I want to say social media, but I, I don't really know. Sure because I don't know how it's hard to foster like an actual relationship through that because yeah. it's not in person. Yep. So to develop those relationships, you first need to understand that, you know, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. I like that. You need to know that somebody else is like a, your friend that has wisdom, your friend, or if you have wisdom, you both can just collide on it and you have knowledge and you understand like their circumstance. You just have, you're just empathetic towards each other. You're great friends. So random stuff like that. Like, yeah, you're going to completely go back and forth with each other and just strengthen each other continually. Yeah. So you, like, we need to be motivated in that aspect. Like, if we have friends or family that we're connected with, like reach out to them because they probably want someone to be like, they want someone to reach out to them. That's how I feel sometimes. Yeah. I, I kind of want somebody to text me right now. Or like, I, I want, I want to text this person because I think they need support and help and love. So what I would do, I would just try and find that friend or, or, or family member that you really connect close with and grow with them um i can't find another perfect answer like what else like to, to find new people i mean for me um emma my wife and i go to church and get plugged into small groups yeah. and so like just random stuff like that like find like a club find like if you're in college find a club or something like i have a couple friends that did that over covid and they got plugged in with a bunch of friends and he and that made him no longer isolated yeah inside his room all day because I will tell you this, when I lived in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center, I isolated myself so much. Yeah. Why? There's, there's a lot to talk. I don't know. I, I was there just to like, I just had a, 
job and a goal in my mind where I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to train every day, eat, sleep. That's it. And then go back in my room and just like, I don't know, not doing anything. I didn't want to get like too close to everybody. Cause everybody was just leaving all the time. Yeah. So, and like, I, I tried to get close to my teammates, but I think I just maybe felt insecurities with that because they were so much of like, they were way above me yeah. in their training and they were like, they had past games experience and stuff like that too. And I don't know why my mind was just so like, it didn't want to grow. Yeah. Maybe it was just like a pride thing or something. And I just wanted to do it all myself. Sure. And I want to tell you, I, I want to say like to everybody listening, like that's so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have to understand, like, I understand that now looking back at my past, just uh, like, even like I was, I was young, 19 or 20. And I was just, I was, I had so much pride in my heart because I got all this like opportunity and stuff to go into the training center and I was training really well and stuff, but I just thought that I could do it all myself. Yeah. Um, for like the first, like maybe six months. And then I realized, wait, no, I need to like connect with my teammates right now. Yeah. And the, I, I got to that realization because I got, I got way too isolated and I realized like, it felt like I was in like a pit of isolation yeah. and I was just like, okay, I got to get out of this grave right now because I can feel the weight of my heart. And the, the way I got on my grave was by I literally forced myself to get up and I went down to like the dining hall and just, and just talked with people. Yes. And it like, it was crazy. I don't know why. I, and I also think I isolated myself a lot. It's because I got so tired. Yeah. Like I was so tired from the training that I just wanted to sleep all day. Mm, <laughs> and like go yeah. back in. There's just, there's other like factors like that too. And like, you sometimes just have to force yourself up and get yeah. plugged in and connect with people. Well, that's a good metaphor, right? Cause people go to work nine to five or now we, we won't even live our yeah. house. We'll wake up and we'll work all day long. And then we're too tired to uh yeah. the workout yeah. or take that yeah. next step or, th yeah. or things like that was there a breaking point that hit that or you because I, I believe you basically it that yeah. brings up a huge point like yeah. we're too tired yeah. <laughs> well i think we make that excuse too much yes i do i mean i still make that excuse sometimes i'm not gonna lie where do you I really find the energy do. where do you find the energy i find the energy through my wife right now actually yes it's it's really cool like if i didn't have her i would probably like me i'd probably be more isolated than what i am right now mm. And I find the energy through just um, who the people I work with as well. And then my friends that I stay connected with, like, yeah. I mean, you give me amazing energy. I think like, yes. you have no Thank idea. You. Like, it's so cool. You. Like you're incredible. Thank and you. so that's, that's where I find it is through my wife. She kind of just helps me get up and like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Cause I'm so tired from practice. Right. And then yeah. I work at my other job and, you know, I just want to focus on practice and like, and just like sleep and recover, but I know I need to get up and we need to go to small group. Mm. And what's cool though, is that like, once you get up, once you do that and do like, like get plugged in or see community, dude, you feel so good afterwards. Yeah. You feel so rekindled yeah. because you're around other people. For so sure. I want to like encourage people that are listening. You are going to feel amazing afterwards. It could be, it might be super overwhelming and you might be an introvert. Like I I'm, I'm like, I've turned into an introvert over like the years in a way sure. I'm, I'm still extroverted and like front of people and stuff like that. Yeah, you wouldn't know talking to you. That. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if I get the chance to do that, I become extroverted, but inside, like when I come home, I'm super introverted mm. and I'm just like, I need rest. Um, but once you get plugged in, once you go to places and, and meet up with friends, like it just, it brings you back. It almost brings me back to my childhood when I do that all the time. Yeah. It's I'd go to my friend's time. house. I, yeah. Literally dude, every summer I'd spend like every weekend at my friend's house and just, we'd be just like having so much fun. It brings me back to that. Especially as we get into like our adult life, yeah. we, we just claim we're too tired and we can't hang out with people, but you need to know that once you do, like, you should choose to hang out with people because you're going to feel really rejuvenated. Yeah. Well, what are we doing on this planet? Right. Like what's the point? Yeah, right? Is it to sleep all day and not that sleep yeah, yeah. is extremely important, but yeah, to get out, experience, grow, share, love. Like, yeah, I can, I completely agree. That's I completely so agree. True. Dude, let's talk a little wow. bit about your training with, with um, just at that high level. Like, Right. I don't care what it is. If it's, you know, you're on, uh, you know, the stock market, you're in, you're in New York on the stock exchange. Like there's just different, you know, there's different places you can go that you're with uh, the top elite of the elite. And mm -hmm. you know, when you want, it's a different environment. Talk, can you talk just oh, a little bit 100%. about, about that environment? Like, what does that look it, like? It, feel like coming out of high school? Cause it sounds like you went to high school. Yeah. Doing your yeah. It, it is the best environment. Like you get into this, this area and everybody is serious. Like they're just dedicated. Yeah. And I think that's what has like 
made my mind change so much too, is that I've been around so many people that are like professional and elite athletes. And like, I, 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 I'm an elite athlete and professional athlete now. And it's so sick to like have that claim because being around them just made me dedicated, yeah. made me want to be more of a goal setter and like realize like every single time I leave like the wall from for swimming, I have a goal set in my mind of what I need to do. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm making goals up as I'm, as I'm swimming, as I'm staring at a black line, yeah. you know? And so like that whole setting, like where I'm at right now, um, at, I'm, up, I'm up North in Phoenix right now. Yeah at the J swim Academy. And it's amazing there. We have a really cool elite club team there. My coach finally got a, um, a elite team mm. and he's coaching it. And we have like 20 athletes. Wow. Um, a lot of them are like younger kids. Some of them are going for D one scholarships, stuff like that, which is super cool. Yep. And I, here I am this 24 year old guy with all these like older high schoolers that are super fast, by the way. Yeah. Um, like I'm training with them, but it's elite though, because our coach sets that setting too. Yeah. And people know, like we're all from different backgrounds, all have different goals set in mind. But as soon as we all jump into that pool, um, it's game time. We get the workout done. That's so amazing. like that setting in life and, and in swimming, like it's just, it's, it's amazing. Like pursue that because being like that top elite or that professional in your field is such a rewarding feeling. And you're going to be always surrounded by people that are like that as well. Well, it's that community, right? Like you mentioned, char- yeah. iron sharpens iron. Keep going back you know, to that. If you're training with someone who's, who's, you know, not that serious or kind of putzing around, it's like, what well, I hit you up. I was like, Hey, I want to learn how to swim better. Like I want an Olympian yeah. to teach me that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, exactly. I, could, exactly. I would go with my buddy and we mess around and we talk. I'm like, I, I know the second you and I set a date, which we will after this. Yeah. I'm fucking going hard. I'm like, I don't oh, have 100%, a choice. And yeah. I'm going to make sure you do go hard. And I'm going to, I'm going to, but I'm going to teach you like, I'm going to teach you proper stuff, you know, but like, of course. it's like so cool. Like you you want that right you, you yeah. do want that you want to be yeah. around you want to be around world class people you know it's like yeah. uh, i had a buddy who got to hear magic johnson speak and uh, you know he was talking That's about cool. employees but magic johnson was saying you know hire a players today cuz you'll eventually always come back for them so he had this idea that you know you, you hire c players cuz they're cheap or they're easy or they're comfortable yeah, or whatever right. it is and but eventually you'll come back to the a players and you just lost time and money in between so it's like that same thing i think even with my I, friend group or my peers yeah. it's like, I want to be around the best person on the planet. If I want to learn to swim, I want the best person to teach me yeah. how to do it. So, you know what I mean? And the next, I think the next question in mind too is like, we can go off that is how do you become that A player? <clears throat> yeah. You yeah. know, I, you know, I, I mean, my answer to that is I think you, you model people that are where you want to be and you learn mm-hmm. what they did. Like, it's like, for me, it's like books, right? It's like, people are always like, read books, read books. Like if I can talk to you and download your life, like you, I don't know how many hours a day for how many years you've trained oh. to swim. I can download all of that, not all of it, a decent amount of that in an hour or two, in three, four weeks, months that we hang out together. I can start downloading. Dude, I don't have to lose my cool. leg to, to learn the mindset of going through something like that's that. That's insane. Like, you know, like I think, I think that's how you get to, I think that's how you just, you get to absorb, you know, uh, um, decades and, and, and centuries of wisdom is just from, from being around people that are, are where you want to be. That's my sense. I mean, what's yours? What's your take on that? I 100% agree with that. Yeah. There's, there's no other like way because we're all growing at a different pace and a different rate. And we all have other things to share constantly. Yeah. And, and like, you know, as I've worked at Dutch Bros for a little bit, like I'm, I'm a supervisor there now and it's so yeah. much fun. It's awesome. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering like, what's the next career for me? Is this it? You know, like there's a lot of thoughts been, that's been circling in my head for that, yeah. especially as I'm in these last six months for training. So I've just been really praying and thinking about that too. But like the cool thing about that place though, is that I've got to like meet a lot of people along yeah. the way. Like, like, like you, I met you sure. like, yeah. isn't that sick? Like I met an A player. Let's go. So cool. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Like, it's so sick. Cause I, that's cool to like meet people like that and just get their mind and like understand their mind. Like I wanted to, like, I wanted to hook up with you right away. Like I wanted to go get breakfast with you right away yeah. because I wanted to like grow and learn, you know, Dude, I it, love it, that. you have to have that, you have to choose that mindset too. Yes. I guess you also have to choose to be, you have to choose to be grateful in the morning, choose to have that positivity. You also need to choose that to like grow yeah. and like wanting to grow. Cause once you do, like, you're going to understand that, man, you're going to be able to like get past so many obstacles in life. Yeah, too. for it's sure. so cool. And have fulfillment, you know, which is ultimately, I think what it's about, dude, if you don't mind, let's, let's talk about, because when I saw kind of, you were an Olympian working at Dutch bros. I was like, I didn't understand it. And uh, from what I understand, it's not I just, don't understand you know, it. It's Olympic. It's all walks or games or right. Educate me actually educate everyone. Cause I, I didn't, I didn't know it was a thing. So, okay. I'll, I'll say this right off the bat. Sean white 
<laughs> Olympic gold medalist, snowboarder, yeah, best snowboarder ever. I, I love him. He's yes. one of my favorite athletes of all time, besides yes. Michael Phelps. Yes. Um, like I wish I want to meet him so badly. Yeah. Um, no doubt you will. Yeah, I'll be sick. He said this in an article. He said, uh, I could be paraphrasing it, but as long as it was along the lines of every like Olympic athlete that's training lives mostly lives below the poverty line unless you're like a like a gold medalist at a games yeah it's a fact Crazy. like we are constantly and i shared a conversation with i think one of your buddies nick yes and he told me like i understand and it's not he's like i understand it's not for the money like right now you know like you're not you're not trying to go for the money you're trying to go for this goal and dream of making tokyo and yeah. getting that like that like stardom and everything and, and that'll set you up and so it's, it's, it all comes down to like you meddling at a games wow. and it's kind of interesting to say that and to be open about that, oh, but it's, it's kind of true because that's what, that's what a lot of sponsors <laughs> look at too, is that like, maybe they look at that metal, but I think I, I really want them to look at the stories yeah. and stuff like that. I think that's like the most key because you can sell a story yep. and not even just sell it, but you can like use it for like somebody else's personal gain. So that way they can be, you know more grateful and be inspired and encouraged and i really want companies to start doing that uh, more often yeah but like that's 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 just like the whole thing right there with like the olympics you know also the united states is all based off of sponsorships for yes. the u.s olympic and paralympic committee so they pay the athletes um who are on national team they pay them money but it's through like sponsor money that they get that money you mm -hmm. know and like and the donations and stuff like that yeah. other countries around the world are paid through by their country, by their yes. government. So that's a whole differentiator right there. Like if I wanted to, I could probably go swim for team Australia and get paid a lot of money, Yeah, you know, but I'm not going to do that. Cause obviously uh, I'm an American. Yeah. So <laughs> I would never like that. That feels like I just betrayed my, com my, uh, my country okay. and I yeah. would never do that. Um, okay. Yeah. Especially if I have like, cause I have four older siblings that are all in the military. So I'm not going to like go and do that. <laughs> my way of serving and representing my country. Yeah. So that's what's sick also is like, it's, it's that, it's that cool pride within there that, you know, you're representing your country every day. Yeah. And, um, that's what I'm living for is that because I love the United States so much. I love this country. Um, I love the freedom and, you know, I just, I don't know that that's basically it. And I, I do work at Dutch bros. Yeah. Because I have to make ends meet because I'm not making that much money off of swimming yet. Yeah. And it's like, it's like that hustle. It's, it's a long-term investment basically. Yes. That's what swimming is like when I go to Tokyo, that's going to be that long-term investment when I make Tokyo and, and yeah. I'm on that metal stand yeah. because I'll be there with, with metal in hand and then I'll get paid, you know, and yeah. hopefully a lot of things can go from that. Like I would love to start a speaking circuit and a speaking, speaking career. I'm working on that through my website right now. I have a TEDx talk coming up. So yeah. it's the opportunities that come from swimming as well like this, like our podcast or like this podcast, like just yeah. talking with you, like, this is amazing, you know? Well, yeah, so I, it's, I think it's all worth it, but yeah, I do have to work at Dutch Bros part-time or a part-time job to make ends meet you, and I can provide for my wife and I, so. you know, bro, I, um, I wanted to wait till we, uh, talked on our, our podcast here, but, um, yeah. you know, you, you and I talked about your finances that you needed to be able to, uh, uh yeah, to, to train full-time and, yeah. uh, I, I want to let you know my my way of serving is I I'm gonna cover those finances um, for the next six months and uh, and uh, allow you to train full time, bro. And uh, I I just uh, did your your you're a real inspiration. I think you're gonna serve a lot of people, and um, yeah I, I I'm going to uh, bro, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna cover you're that. Gonna make, you're gonna make me cry on the podcast right now, man. I, I think you're an incredible individual. I think you've got a lot of people's lives to serve and. Uh, you know, you, you, we get, we get opportunities to be able to, to pay it forward. And this is mine, bro. So I, I, uh, I thank love you. you, and so appreciate much. you have no idea. Yeah, bro. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I, um, thank you, bro, for what you're doing and what you're going to do for others. And, um, yeah, yeah. over there, I want to tell her, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, thank you so much, man. Yeah, bro. I want to give you a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it soon, brother. We'll do it soon. But dude, I just, I wanted to wait till we got to, got to connect and, uh, yeah, bro. I, I want you to chase that. Dream I, I want to let you know that. Thank you. I want to let you know that like when you gave me those contacts, bro, I reached out to, like every single one of them because I, I wanted to work hard for it. You got to know how much of a hard worker I am. I know. I know I'm you did. Trying bro. to. Thank you, man. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Dude, thank I've been, you, you know, trying to work hard to provide for my family and. Oh my.
You have no idea. I'm going to get gold in Tokyo now, bro. You have no idea. I know you are, bro. You got a lot I of want to help to you. Oh. Oh, bro, you got, you got a job for the next six months, bro. You got to show everyone that what's possible. And, and your uh, lessons are free, by the way. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you, bro. But are you um, kidding me, man? Thank you. Oh, brother, of course, dude. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call after this. We'll get everything all, all square, squared away. But um, yeah, bro, I, I uh, you know, I, I guess on that note, dude, tell us what it's gonna what it's gonna look like. Like, what does the future for you hold? You're and, gonna make uh, me talk now. <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean it because I, I, you know, I, I, I dude. believe in, in invest. You know, you're talking about investing in stories and in people and and i I shouldn't call it an investment because there's no there's no you know uh financial gain gain that i'm expecting in any way i i I just i want you to just be able to be your best self you know and and uh and and inspire others bro i know you do and and it's authentic and i believe it and i I believe in you when people ask me like when i was a kid too bro like i don't know what god has for me and this is just me personally just speaking out from my heart but when people ask me who I want, who I've always wanted to be growing up, I always looked at, I always said, I want to be like Billy Graham. I want to be like him. I want to, you know, that huge, crazy speaker, just yeah. like he's preaching Jesus, which is amazing. But I want to, I want to do like more. I just want to preach and, and give encouragement, share like my testimony to people. Like literally dude, Emma says this, when I lost my foot and when she first met me, she was like, you know, you know, what, what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. Yeah. And hit me because as a Christian myself, you know, what things that happen to you, like there's a reason and purpose behind it. You have to understand that. Like we have to understand that. Yeah. Literally, man, I got one foot and I think it's the most amazing thing. I would never turn back time to have my foot back Yeah. because of the blessing right now. I would have never, I would have never connected with you. Yeah. And like got to be your friend, your brother, like literally like, Dude, man, geez, these next six months, man, are going to be insane. I'm like, I'm literally just thinking about every single way now that I'm going to be able to just formulate how I can train at a whole nother level. Yeah. And, and my coach is going to be ecstatic. Dude, I can't wait, bro. Thank you, dude. Dude, we're pumped to, pumped to watch the journey over the next six months <laughs> and be on that, brother, bro. years to come. What's when, when is Tokyo? Give us the date so we can all start. Tokyo gonna, is going to be, uh, August 26th through September 5th. Nice. It, th- those around those dates. I don't yeah, know yeah. exactly. But trials is going to be in Minneapolis for me. Um, our team USA team trials is going to be uh, June 15th through the 17th. Oh, good. Uh, this this year coming up. Good, good, yeah. bro. Well, I'm I'm super excited to watch you, Ty. I I, I love you the little bit that I know of you. I can't wait love to watch you. what you're doing in the world and uh, happy happy to be a part of it, bro. And get to watch Good you. No grow. idea how thankful I am. Yo. Oh guys uh leave a follow at ty dutcher instagram and then i just started streaming on twitch at twitch.tv slash ty joseph gg follow so the follow boy love it, <laughs> the plug the plug love, love it guys. You, dude i can't wait to see you on friday let's uh let's talk after i don't know how you want you yeah want yeah no i'm gonna end it right now bro we'll chat dude Bye. okay thanks ty later bro later